Hello. Once again, it's a real joy and a pleasure to be with you. I'm Dr. Mike McKinney, president of Promise Christian University in Pasadena, and we want to welcome you to our telecast today, Promise Christian Live. It's our hope that each week as we come on to be a very great blessing to all of you that are viewing, and we're endeavoring to bring different, very interesting guests, friends of ours, friends of the university, people that have been in ministry and different walks of life, but they love the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're, we're praying that these programs will really be a blessing to every one of you as you tune in. And today is no exception. We have another wonderful guest today in, in our studio, Dr. David Snodderly. Brother Snodderly, it's a great joy and a pleasure Thank to you. have you with us today. It's my pleasure. And uh, Dr. Snodderly is one mm. of the uh, uh, leaders at uh, U.S. Center for World Missions. You know, it's a great joy to have you with us. And uh, Brother David, um, we've, uh, we've been friends a long time, and we appreciate you and your lovely wife's beautiful ministry. And we'd like you to share uh, with our viewing audience today about your ministry and so many interesting things that you're doing uh, with uh, U.S. Center for World Missions and your work uh, in the overseas ministry as a missionary and a preacher. And so, uh, how, how did all this get started with your working with U.S. Center for World Missions? I was a student at Wheaton College Graduate School when I received Christianity Today magazine in which they interviewed Dr. Ralph Winter, oh, yes. who was a professor of uh, missions at Fuller Seminary at that time, School of World Mission. And uh, they talked to him about his ambition to start a center for world mission in Pasadena to raise the flag and wave the flag for the unreached people groups oh, yeah. who had no missionaries essentially, uh, especially no emerging evangelizing church in their midst. And in that uh, interview, he mentioned that he was buying a campus at the U.S. Center for World Mission. This was a $16 purchase. Oh. And he said, that's easy <clears throat> for a man of God to raise $16 million. He says, we just need to persuade a million, million Christians to give $16. I was one of those million Christians. <laughs> and uh, so I sent my gift in. And you know how you do when you give a missions gift. Often you say, may the Lord bless that. May they use it wisely. Yeah. I'll just follow the ministry. And for those many years, uh, probably mid-70s to 1998, the ministry instead followed me, and I became more and more burdened for the people groups who do not have a witness. Yes. And the Lord said to me in, in a very explicit vision, he said, uh, these people that you see in this vision will never have a witness in their life unless you do something about it. Wow. I took that very personally Yes. and considered it a call and uh, called the man who had gotten my $16, and I said, do you have any... <laughs> <laughs> guidance for me. I have this burden to go to unreached peoples. And uh, he said, come and, and, and uh, have a week with us and we'll talk with you about that. He took me to dinner, Dr. Ralph Winter did. And uh, he said to me, he says, you're called and you could go to an unreached people group and do a lot of good by evangelizing them and, and getting a church started among them. He said, but what you could do in your lifetime, you could do a hundred times more if you would stay at the U.S. Center and help us raise up 100 missionaries, train them, and help them to go to the field and do what 100 missionaries could, to, could do. And I prayed about that, and I feel like, yes, that's the calling that God has on my life. And yes. for these past uh, close to 11 years now, that's what I've been doing, is speaking in churches, uh, raising awareness of the need, uh, nearly 2 billion people who are without a witness, and then... Um, oh, and uh, just asking people to consider going and praying and giving and, and welcoming unreached peoples to our shores when they do come here. And uh, then also going myself, oh, showing yes. that I'm not ashamed yeah, or afraid to, share a little bit about that to, today. Uh, <laughs> to go into places that are really in need of the gospel. So Dr. Winter, actually, when you, you as a young student, you were touched by that that ministry, a particular ministry, mm -hmm. and obviously the Lord was getting ready to use you in that ministry, even with, before you realized it. Mm -hmm. And then getting to meet Dr. Winter and, and his seeing the call of God in your life. That must have been a very, uh, made, a, made a tremendous impact 
when he told you that? It was a prophetic voice oh, into yes, my life. I, I considered it as such. And he mentored me and um, gave me so much. My wife now is is uh, the, uh, sort of the head of training there at the U.S. Center. She's the president. Yes, of, and she's uh, also the pro provost of, uh, of William Carey University. Is that, that right? That's what I mean to say. She's yes. the CEO for William Carey International University, which Wonderful. is a part of the, the uh, U.S. Center for World Mission. Why? And so I, I sort of consider that I do the rough work. I catch the fish, and she cleans them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get people uh, uh, to, to realize that call, and then the training can take place there Isn't at the university. Yeah. And I like what, uh, in that prophetical voice, as you mentioned, that Dr. Winter uh, shared how God revealed him to tell you that if you worked from the headquarters, mm -hmm. you could reach all over the world, mm -hmm. uh, besides going yourself, of course. What a wonderful concept. Yes. And, yes. It's and the concept of uh, mobilization, roughly analogous to a military recruiter who's sending people to the front. Yes. And you do need many people who are behind the front doing recruiting work and supporting the work that's going on at the front. And this is a great benefit to uh, world missions throughout to have these personnel going from, from our work. Isn't that marvelous? And I know that U.S. Center is doing a tremendous work <clears> all <throat> over the world. It must be very exciting to be a, a, a leader within that or wonderful organization. Uh, and, and we know that Dr. Winters has gone home with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it's just carrying right on, isn't it? Uh, yes, David? with uh, the training I mentioned, the mobilization I mentioned, we do a lot of service to missions agencies. Right. Uh, there's so much going on in missions today that you could say, in a way, you could say the missions industry. Yes. And they need to be served with this vision and uh, awareness of the unreached peoples. And then, um, you know, the strategies for reaching into them. Right. So, uh, and, we're the, and the center has provided a strategy. God gave them a strategy. Mm -hmm. didn't, didn't many, he? many strategies. Yes. Uh, we consider our particular forte, the, the niche in the market, is to see what's not going on, what's not happening, Oh yes. and then to either ask somebody to do it, <laughs> and if they won't do it, do it ourselves. Do it yourself, so, yeah. which you have literally done. Yeah. It, it's got to be very, very exciting, and I, and I know that, uh, and you you're also are traveling uh, in mm -hmm. your ministry, we'll talk about that in a little while, but I like our, our viewing audience to know that Dr. Davis Snodder is not only one of the uh, uh, leaders over there at the U.S. Center for World Mission, but he, and, and a marvelous preacher, but he's also a musician, songwriter, and singer. And I've asked him today on the telecast, we would be so kind to sing for us. So we would like you to sing us a song today, too. Would okay, you do that, Brother sure. David? Thank you. Could I just say that uh, the, the tenor of what I try to do in, in um, musicianship is for worship. It's for the glorification of God. Yes. And even the song, I'm going to sing a second song today that will be... Um, about the love of God, and I, I find myself uh, trying to even change the words of this to "It's your God, it's your love, God." Yes. To to say these things to Him, I sit by my fireside, so to speak, at home, and play like I'm going to play for you. Amen. By the hour, and heaven comes down, <laughs> and I just hope and pray that some of that anointing will come to you, as I as I play for you today. Yes. Thank you. Lord, you are so beautiful, Lord, so wonderful, beautiful, wonderful is what you My shining star, if I could worship for a billion years, I'd only tell a portion of your love to sing your beauty for eternity. Would not repay my debt of love. my shine. 
shining star. Master is what you are. Since I know you in your glory, I'm a part of heaven's story. Since, Lord, you're my king. If I could worship for a billion years, I'd only tell a portion of your love to sing your beauty for eternity. Would not repay my net of love, cause you're beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Brother David, that was beautiful, and oh, I understand you. that you wrote that song. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Oh, you know, how long have you been writing songs? My goodness. Uh, just uh, about five years. I yeah. see. Another <laughs> that God has given you. And I know that you have a second song for us to sing, but while you're getting ready, we want to show a little clip to our audience today about Brother David's ministry, and I, I believe this was taken in the Philippines, is that right? Much of it was. And we'll talk about the Philippines after, after your song, but at this time we'd like to show a, a little bit of that clip while you're getting ready to do your second song. Sure. Beth and David Snodder leave been trained mission workers to serve around the world, especially among the 8,000 people groups who are blocked by cultural barriers from comprehending the gospel. About 2.7 billion people live in these 8,000 people groups. They have not yet heard the message of God's love in an understandable way because they are isolated by language, culture, or race. Some even feel threatened by Christianity. God's heart is found in Matthew 24:14. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a witness to all nations, people groups, and then the end shall come. So our passion and calling is to provide these people groups with workers trained to present the gospel cross-culturally. God has allowed us to do just that. He has used our many years of experience as pastors to prepare us and uniquely position us in this strategic ministry. For the last 10 years, He has allowed us to work at the U.S. Center for Mission, mobilizing and training workers. We need your help in order to continue to do this. As you give today, ask God to help you grow both as an advocate for and witness to unreached people groups. We thank you and pray God's richest blessings upon you. At this time, Brother David, we'd like you to sing your second song and then we'll talk about this wonderful The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen could ever tell. It goes beyond the highest and reaches to the lowest hell the guilty pair bound with care God gave his son to and pardon from his sin. Oh, love 
of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong it shall forevermore endure the saints and Skies of parchments made, and every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade to write the law. That was wonderful, Brother David. Thank you so much. What a beautiful talent the Lord has given you in singing, playing, and songwriting, and being a missionary. And uh, it's just great. Uh, when we before we uh, changed over to your song, we saw a beautiful clip of of your ministry in the Philippines. And could you please share with our audience today about your ministry in the Philippines and the great things God is doing? I know there's limitations on the time you have for your show, <laughs> but. I'm so excited about what God does there yes. in uh, the southern part of the Philippines. Many, many wonderful people who have not really yet engaged the living Christ, Isa. And um, I was in my little Filipino church here in America that I attend as my home church. And uh, God was just coming with uh, waves of glory to me and uh, his love surrounding me so much it was almost as if somebody <laughs> had me in their arms hugging me <laughs> and so tears were just coming down my face I was sitting on the floor in a prayer meeting and uh, this went on for some time and you know we all need that from time to time to build us and to help us yes. in our Christian walk and all of a sudden it just cut off and uh, the Lord s said to me stand up and I stood up and he says now you've received my love but equip yourself like a man because I'm calling you to a great calling. Oh, my. And I realized just without him saying any more that what he was doing was oh, saying, yes. don't just go to churches and missionaries, but I want you to do some of the going yourself. Amen. And uh, my heart and my burden had been for the Filipino people, and yes. people knew that. Yeah. Essentially, I walked out of that prayer meeting, and a little Filipino lady came up to me and she discerned what God was doing. She says, God is calling you to go to the Philippines. And she said, God is calling me to send you. Oh, praise the Lord. Which is a big wow. plus, a you miracle. know, for me. Yeah. I need some assistance Amen. in my faith sometimes. And, uh, and she says, I will send you every year to the Philippines. And uh, um, 
She gave me a little bit of a, a setback, though, in saying that I, there's some strings attached. She didn't say it in these words, but some strings attached to my gift. She said, when you go, I want you to speak in my home church. I'm from that area that you're going to. <laughs> and uh, I want you to uh, go see my home place and meet my best friends. She named who they were. And uh, I had no idea. There's 7,700 islands in I, the Philippines. I, yes, it's quite. I called the only missionary friend partner that I knew <laughs> that he was really well acquainted with. And I said, Gerald, where are you now? And he told me where he was. And I'm not going to mention for security reasons where course, he is. Of course. But uh, <laughs> he, he told me where he was. And it was the very city where her home church was. Oh, my goodness. I said, That's amazing. I said, if I come work with you for a while, <laughs> could I get to speak in that church? And he said, of course. <laughs> this guy is my best buddy. He's got to have you come. <laughs> so I said, uh, my, there's some strings attached to my gift. And I explained to him, and I said, um, I have to meet her best friends. And I mentioned who they were. And he says, they're my best friends. They oh, come over practically every oh Sunday for Lord. lunch. Thank you, Lord. So you'll Isn't get to meet wonderful? them. Praise and God. Uh, this is, again, this is 7,700 yeah. islands, and God's My. putting this together. Oh. And then he said, they will take you over to her home place, and you'll get to see her home place Isn't and everything that like that. So it all worked out. And so I'm working with uh, this, this constant contact, I'll say, in the, in the Philippines to, yes. do, um, to do outdoor ministry uh, of love, uh, yes. crusade type, but... We don't call it crusade because of the mm -hmm. connotations of that yeah. word. It's rallies, evangelistic rallies. Evangelistic rallies, rallies yeah. And uh, we That's just right. see hundreds of people come to the Lord. Just uh, Can I tell you one story Please about a do. child that would, came to the would, Lord? I'd love to hear that. Um, he was nine years old. His name was Jose. Yes. And uh, he found Jesus very real, as you'll understand from this story, because he was running back after the service through the darkness. His little chenillas, we call them, uh, flip-flops flopping in the darkness and right. he's trying to figure out how he's going to tell his family because his family is not from our faith and they they believe in Jesus as I'll explain but uh, differently and so he really didn't need to worry about how to say it because his dad met him at the door and he said yes. you're in trouble because you went down there to the, where they were preaching tonight oh. he says you know I didn't want you to do that Jose said, Dan, they didn't say anything against religion. They just talked about Jesus. We believe in Jesus. I even asked Jesus to come into my heart and save me tonight. That's okay, isn't it? And his dad, to Jose's surprise, says, I'll show you if that's okay. And he took him by the hand, led him over to the fireplace, and got a piece of kindling wood and began mm. to beat that little oh boy. Oh, my. Oh, my. And he said, I'm not going to quit beating you until you promise that you won't go back and be with those evangelicals. Mm, my goodness. He's a hero, but he's just nine years old. Yeah. He took it as long as he could, and he finally he said, Dad, if you'll just quit beating me, I promise you I'll obey and not go back. And his dad, true to his word, stopped. And uh, little Jose limped off to bed, bruised and bloody. And goes to bed, and it just seems moments later that he's shaken awake to him. Of course, it had been all night, but it's his little friend Juan who goes to school with him every day. And Juan yeah. said, you're always up to go with me. What's wrong with you today? And Jose said, well, my dad beat me last night. I just really, I guess I didn't feel like waking up this morning. So Juan kind of carefully helped him get up and get washed right. up, as much as little boys like to wash up, you know. And they toddle off to school. Well, on the way to school are the, the grounds where we have the outdoor rallies, and uh, many times we're out there worshiping God. And yes. uh, so Jose stopped one of the workers and says, um, you know, I was here last night, and I received Jesus in my heart. Wonderful. He said, but uh, I can't come back. My, my dad beat me and made mm. me promise not to come back. Mm. And he said, he didn't beat Jesus out of my heart, though. That's great. He said, I want you to pray that God will save my whole family yes well that's like kind of saying sick them to a dog when you say that to the crusade oh, member course. team because we're already prepped with how to go to their house right. and, and see if we can minister further yeah, we have just a couple of minutes oh left, i'm sorry so it's all right but i'd like to hear the end <laughs> but of that. uh in short the crusade team went there and spoke with the father and uh, the father came to the lord Wonderful. The whole family, the children, other children were out of school that day providentially. Good. The Tremendous whole family testimony. came to the Lord. 
Jose comes back from school and uh, his dad says, son, get your chores done. You can go to the meeting tonight. Oh my goodness. But Jose was too smart by that time. He says, dad, you're not gonna trick me and beat me again. <laughs> his dad said, but you don't understand. The missionaries came by and the whole family has received Jesus. Oh my goodness. We're going with you. Oh, <laughs> what a tremendous so praise story, yes, praise God. God so good. You know, it's, it's that, one of, Could I just say that's one of 496 stories just this imagine? last time around. Can you imagine? Yeah. Well, obviously you're doing a great work in the Philippines and other countries through U.S. Center for World Missions. And that's why I wanted to have you on the Pro Day. And I want to thank you, Brother Oh, Dave. glory to what the Lord. What a wonder. I wish we had hours to talk <laughs> about these things. Yes. But we want to tell our viewing audience today that we're so glad to have Dr. David Snodderly on today, and we are thanking uh, all of you for viewing. And we know that these testimonies, I'm sure this has really touched your heart today about the work that's being done around the world for the Lord Jesus Christ and how he's making an impact uh, with the ministry that uh, Dr. David has to these various nations of the world. And if God's calling you to do something in the mission field, I'm sure as you pray and seek God as, as Brother David did, God will begin to show you what to do. We want to thank you here at Promise Christian University. We trust you'll tune in again next week to our program. If we can help you to become a student at our university with our program, we would love to have you do that. We want to thank you again, and God bless you real good today.